Howdy, and welcome back. I was going to play some ominous music, but that doesn't seem really fitting. See, we got something new here between the M&P 9 and the 686. It's a Smith & Wesson E-Series. Just bought it today. Actually shot it today as well. Pretty nice damn pistol, if you ask me. All three of these guns have been safety checked and cleared and all that good stuff. But I'll go through some of the features real quick. It's a pretty refined gun. Um, it's got a really good price point. It's actually not, uh, well, I've owned Springfields and Colts, and I can honestly say that the average Colt's a little overpriced for what you get now, because the current market prices are around $1,000. You certainly get more features in this gun for the price compared to the average Colt. And I was actually looking at some of the Colts that they had in there today, and I'm just pretty sad, actually. It may not be Colt's fault, but some people, the distributors in particular, seem to be taking advantage of it. The top strap here is serrated, much like the top of the 686 revolver. Same serrations. See if we can group, kind of zoom in on that. And now, looks like the, there we go. We can kind of make it out there. Yeah, and uh, they work pretty well. Novak front and rear, and probably one of the more controversial features of this gun are the fish scale front and rear serrations. Well, you know what? They work. I don't care what people say. They may look a little goofy, but guess what? MP9 has them in a slightly modified form, not as stylized. But honestly, they're basically the same. These actually are a little bit uh, grippier. I, I really like them, and I, they really work. That's all I can say. This gun has a single-sided safety. I'm not big on the ambi safeties. My uh, my previous 1911, a Colt government had one, and a Springfield loaded uh, nine millimeter that I owned also had one. And to me, they're kind of like mud flaps. They just make the pistol wider and not really necessary. I mean, it's not that hard to shoot left-handed, in all honesty, here. This, this is how difficult it is. Oh, my God. I'm shooting left-handed. Look at that. Up, down, up, down. Pretty easy. Also, this is a steel frame and slide. A lot of people are often confused about that. Well, Smith & Wesson actually made frames for Kimber for quite a while. A lot of people don't know that. My interwebs research skills should have told me that one. Uh, the hammer. Well, you might be able to make out that little dent there. That is an imperfection I'm going to assume from the casting of the hammer. It's an MIM hammer. Machine investment... Uh, I don't know what the hell MIM stands for, but basically it's a investment casting and it's, it's a little, yeah, they pour in, it's a mold injection uh, metal or something along those lines, MIM. A lot of people hate it. Well, guess what? It's here to stay. Even Colt uses it. Get over it. It's, uh, the durability of it may be hotly contested by some people, but it's a 1911. You're going to replace parts anyway. If it fails, replace it with a higher quality part. There you go. Been upset about that. Continue to go down. The frame to grip safety fit here is actually pretty well. One thing that I'm not liking right now is that, uh, let's see if we can zoom back out here. Oh, there it is. You just caught it. This thumb safety, the lower portion is scraping the frame. It's a stain, it's a bead blasted stainless finish, so that's really not much an issue. And I'm more than likely I was going to do it anyway. I scratch at my guns. I'm not too concerned. It's a gun, people. If you get pissy about your gun getting scratched up, go find a new hobby. Just just get over it. The fitting of this grip safety is really well. It didn't pinch me or anything like that. I've had Springfields and Colts that both pinched me in this area. It's uh, also got a little, got the little bump there. A serrated actually a checkered back strap and uh, it's plastic but 
at this price point, that's to be expected. It seems I mean, Colts have been using them for almost 30 years now. They're not too, they're nothing terrible. Up here, what really got my eye when I first saw this gun, it has front strap checkering. Now it's machine check checkering to be sure, but it's it works. It's very it's very grippy. As are the grips. I know a lot of people don't care for the style of the grips, but they're good for their intended purpose of holding onto the gun. They give you good purchase. They're not. My hands were a little sweaty, honestly. It was it's 90 degrees here in College Station, Texas today. Didn't feel like it, but it was. I had come from the come from the dog park, so. But uh, continuing on. Now, one thing I'm not. I've never been normally happy with is an Allen head screw uh, for the uh, grip screws. Never, never been a fan of those. For unlike the majority of the ones I've handled, I put uh, only only put 35 rounds through it today, but uh, they didn't loosen up. They're still really tight. Maybe they're Loctited on. I don't know. But uh, my last Colt, it not even a full magazine through, and it wiggled loose. My uh, Springfield went just a little bit better. It went two magazines. But I normally change those out for the slotted screw. Don't think I'm going to do it on this gun. See the beveled magwell there. Pretty nice. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a magwell, uh, a, you know, aftermarket magwell on this. I haven't run one before, but I've always thought about doing it, and I almost did on the last Colt. But uh, I, I want to see how this holds up. I'm sure my tune will change as soon as I slam magazine home and hit these two little fangs here at the bottom of the frame. Going on, more MIM parts. I already showed you the uh, grip safety or, and the uh, thumb safety. The slide stop is also MIM. More lawyer jargon right here. The going to focus at all. There we go. It says, caution, capable of firing with magazine removed. Well, they have to do that, I guess, since they're in Massachusetts. Smith & Wesson logo, it's actually not very deep on the finish. And finally, slide out here. My uh, barrel bushing and the plug here. That's on a stock 1911, this is the tightest barrel bushing that I have ever removed. I've shot in a lot of 1911s. This gun, it was almost impossible to get it off. And that includes plenty of Springfields, lots of Colts, even a TRP. Outside of maybe an STI, I've never handled a Ned Brown or a Nighthawk. I don't have that kind of money, people. Um, this was tight fitted. Well, this gun had a full length guide rod. I am not a fan of full length guide rods. It's normally one of the first things to change out, and I shot it today with the full length guide rod in, pulled it out. Because, uh, yeah, I hate full length guide rods. I like the GI style, but I may go back to it just because I have to use the, the barrel bushing wrench that comes along with it anyway, which is a nice thing to have a barrel bushing wrench which of course I've already lost it that didn't take long oh there it is right by my failed lottery ticket Smith & Wesson Mark very handy tool if you have a really tight gas um, barrel, uh, barrel bushing overall for under $800 this thing was a steal I honestly can't believe I got this gun for under eight hundred dollars. The other models of the E series are running around a thousand dollars, and uh, they're pretty well in the price range of the TRPs at this point. Uh, locally, TRPs are around twelve hundred dollars, thirteen hundred dollars, and I've seen the other uh, Smith and Wesson E series run in that price range actually. So, and Colts, their baseline Colts are. And I'm seeing here for around eight hundred dollars, which is not bad considering online baseline Colts were going for nine, and anything special, say like a new agent, is going for around a thousand. Completely absurd. Don't understand why. Especially when we are supposed to be buying AR-15s according to the NRA. 
But that's a whole different topic. Actually, the topic of the next video. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, that's it, folks. A trio of Smith & Wessons. Thanks, and giggle.